Hello there and welcome to Lawrence Plays and today we're going to have the third and final part of this weeks, this streams, this sessions, this whatever you want to call it, uh, update video for the Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 playthrough. In the last videos we've had a bit of a look at archaeology and all the resources we're struggling with. Today we're going to have a bit of a calm down, we're going to do a bit of tidying up, we're going to take a look at the science, see how that's going, and tr generally just try and get things sorted out and calmed down, and we'll see how where that takes us and ready for the uh, stream starting up again tomorrow. So let's get stuck in. Last week I talked about how we had um, quite a lot of science available to be done, but we're running short of various different science packs in order to in order to actually get it done. So we have at least we have made at least some of everything, but some of the systems are struggling. So right now we don't have any uh, tier three astro. That's a weird one to run out of. So we'll have a look at that in a moment. But that one's run out. We've run out of tier four bioscience, and that's probably the uh, the vitalic reagent that we were talking about. And we have been having problems with um, energy four as well. So at the moment we've we've this has stopped because we've run out of um, astro three. But if we switched over to something that uses a lot of energy science, like for example energy storage, set that one going, and that that will then then that will start to pull these through, and we may run into a problem with them fairly soon because. As you, uh, I was going to say, as you can see up here, we have a shortage of holmium cable, but no, that, that seems to have been fixed. So uh, we've had enough holmium come through that we're starting to put, fill up on holmium cable. So maybe what I was saying earlier about Tristan's supply issues was a little bit unfair, and we've got to the point where we are actually producing the holmium just about fast enough, and some of the buffers are starting to fill up. We'll have to see how that goes. But yes, there does seem to be a shortage of the, um, of the, of the Astro 3, and that is because we've run, oh, we've run, out, we've run out of significant data. What? Ah, because we've run out of energy insights, and it just happened to be that the Astro was the one we were ripping through the most of, because we were doing one of the long-range star mapping researches. So, yes, well, let, look, well, let's have a quick look, see, see why we've run out of energy insights. So they, those come in from up here, and this is weird, we've run out of energy insights because a load of significant data has found its way onto the belt up here. That's a worry, and also a, a big problem, because we need the memory cards to come in in order to make these, uh, in order to make these insights, because we're using the highly efficient recipes, which means you need more, more uh, data cards. But somehow, we've managed to get some significant data onto this belt. That's very strange. I don't know how that's happened, but it is a, a, a rather serious problem and uh, obviously needs to be sorted out because without um, without the energy insights coming in, we can't obviously we can't make all of the other um, science we can't make science packs. And without science packs, everything's going to fail. So I could put in a little bit of a bleed in here. Actually, no, that, that that that's all silly. Let's just demolish those belts there like that. The bots can come in, rip them up, take take all the data cards away. Yes, okay, we're going to have to sort that out at some point. That's fine. We can do that. Uh, that can stay. I put the belt back in over here. That'll get more of these. Uh, data cards in. There does seem to be a little bit of a shortage of data cards, but I'm cautiously optimistic that once things start running properly again, that'll be fixed. That it just happened again. Um, ah, here's the problem. Right. Yes, we're pulling any um, any any significant data that gets onto into the logistics system is being pulled out into this chest. This chest is not sorting things properly. Uh, th so we need to have another filter on here, I guess, that's taking significant data off to the left. Is that going to cause any problems? I don't think it is, because that's no, that's just there as an emergency overflow for the. Um, no, that is going to cause problem. Mm, I think that should be okay, even even like that. But that does make me wonder what this splitter is for when there's this one here. But when this box was put in and started requesting the significant data, clearly it was it, well, it's, it's clearly gone wrong. So we'll uh, <laughs> yeah, oops. So now we'll have to come back up. Oh, and it's broken. It's going to have broken all the other ones as well for exactly the same reason. However, that does mean we can come along here. We can do a little bit of testing. We can say, actually, no, we don't want any of that. Let the bots come in and uh, pull it all up and then put the belts back in again as well afterwards. Similarly, yes, up here it's broken. So delete all of that. My other concern is whether there's going to be any other significant data on, on this belt that hasn't been pushed out right right to the end yet. But it doesn't seem to be the case. It looks like it's all been pulled through um, into, the, into the various different production areas, which is obviously is bad, but can be sorted. You know, there's a couple at the end there on this one. And then as previously discussed, the, uh, the energy science got the brunt of the last load coming through. So if we do that, then this should fix all of this. We can start making at least some of the, uh, the energy insights again, because we've got, yeah, we've got at least some data cards coming in. The system is now starting to flow. Yeah, these are being, these are being brought back in over here, dro dropped in there, and they are now going down onto this bottom belt to be fed off as significant data to wherever it's needed. So I think that has fixed the problem. We just need to wait for a few more. We just need to wait for more energy en energy insights to be made along here, 
uh, and the system is it looks like it's working we just need to let these chug through and produce enough and, and the system should then catch up the only problem is that we're going to get half of them going up here to go into making science packs but you know they kind of need it up there anyway but I think this should be okay as long as we have enough data cards coming through and there are quite a lot being kicked out from down here but it's kind of it's, it's a bit of a closed loop system and it having having had it get into a jam point it might be a little bit tricky to unjam it which is my biggest concern here um, well having fixed it fixed we'll see, we'll see how this goes see if it starts working well, that was an, an interesting distraction, wasn't it? So, um, yeah, so it looks like things are generally going to be flowing here okay. So we've understood why there's a shortage down here. The energy science seems to be running okay. Let's get another big one running and so, so, we, can, so we can stress test it a little bit. The Bio 4 is struggling, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be something to do with the re lack of reagent coming in. Probably on one of the earlier steps. Yeah, so here we go. The, there is no Vitalic reagent coming in on this belt to go in here to allow us to make Tier 3 uh, bioscience packs. And because you need Tier 3 bioscience to make the Tier 4 bioscience, the Tier 4 bioscience has stopped. So we have a shortage down here. So that is a known problem. It is it is in the process of being fixed. The other one that was a problem last week and is now now seems to be fixed is the energy four along here. And that is, as you can see, that it seems, seems seems to be working. And there were some problems with the catalogues there, and that was traced back to over here where the uh, tier four catalogues are being made. And the problem was that we didn't have any of the star probe data, and that was because. The spaceship over here that goes out to get the Starship probe data, well, we'd launched it a couple of times manually to make sure that the basic concept worked, and then we'd gone, okay, we've got a load now, but it's still a bit full. I don't want to, tr I don't want to set it up to, to leave automatically when I'm not watching it. So when it runs out, we'll set it, we'll set it up to run automatically. Guess what never happened? Yes, we never actually set the thing up to run automatically. Uh, so eventually we ran out of the star probe data, however many bajillion of them we gathered over here. We got through all of them. The belt had finally, finally emptied. And so the system had broken. So we came over here. We, we finished setting up the automation. So this, this uh, constant combinator here has now been hooked into the system. So the ship will now fly off to Kalidus orbit to go and get more. Something weird had happened where we got rather a lot of um, probes and rockets in this, um, in, in this spaceship now. This is supposed to fill up to five of them. Uh, unfortunately, it seems to have filled up to 119 of them instead. Uh, but that's not a serious problem, I don't think, because we can just send it out and eventually it'll churn through all of them. And it will own, and it will never, own theory, it won't load up any more until there's fewer than five in here. Uh, at least that's the hope. Over in Kalidus orbit, that did mean things went a little bit wrong over here, where we then unloaded rather more probe rockets and probes than we meant to. So there's a bit of a, a mess over here. It's all a bit unfortunate because each one of these probes costs us a thousand uh, memory cards, which might be part of the reason we're so short of them um, a, a while back. But the system, we, we've, we've paid for all of that now. It, 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 yes, it was a problem back then, but it's not actually an issue at the moment. So I guess we're just going to churn through these as we do. Um, we'll probably bring back significantly more of the um, of these these data cards when, when we go than we normally would. Maybe we'll keep try and keep an eye on it and, and go out there manually and try and pull and try and fill the spaceship up completely with these data cards. Maybe we won't. Maybe we'll just not worry about it because the system is going to work. It's just going to be a little bit um, inefficient and possibly a tiny bit lossy in places. Actually, it's not even going to be lossy because we have a thing here that stops us putting more more of these probes and um, and rockets in if there's if there's data data cards on the belt here. It's never going to get to the point where you fill the uh, probe silo up so much with data cards that you start to lose them. So, eh, it's there's a there's an enormous number of memory cards buffered in the system now, but other than that, it doesn't really matter. I did notice as I was talking about this that we have run out of uh, what is boson data. So there is there's a gap on the belt here. So there's supposed to be boson data being brought in along along here out of these machines, in fact, which are short of particle stream. Ah, that's interesting. Uh, and so, yeah, the pipe, pipes are obviously empty over here. So particle stream is supposed to be being brought into this station. No, particle stream. That's interesting. Particle stream is supposed. Yes, I remember. Particle stream is supposed to be being made in massive quantities down here by this system. But it's run out of stone. How have you run out of stone? Enable if less than 10,000 stone, you should be enabled. The train of, ah, the Andrug, ah, it's because the Andrugan system has failed. So there's supposed to be a train that comes in here, picks up all of the, all of the junk that's being brought over from Andrugan because Mike is doing the whole, let's try and mine absolutely everything off this planet. There's supposed to be a train that comes over here, grabs all this stuff and brings it down here onto Norvis to be dumped out and then just dealt with by all the various different trains and systems we've got down here. But for some reason, this train is just sitting here like a lemon. It's been put onto manual mode for some reason. So let's see, it's supposed to go from here. This this will be Andrigan split down here. Uh, it's then supposed to go up the elevator. It's supposed to go up there, uh, wait until inactivity and, uh, and, oh, and a, t a tick. So this this will be to say the train is full. Then it's supposed to come down again, but for some reason it's been stopped. Maybe it's been stopped. It's probably been stopped to have all of this stuff put into it. However, that has broken 
everything. So let's set it going again. Let's send it back up the elevator. There it goes. And that allows it to come in over here and pull into this station, where it can then fill up with all of the junk that comes from Andragon, which means that we can now start to gradually, very, very gradually, empty this warehouse down these two belts. That means the stone can start to flow, again, also rather gradually. So, um, yeah, in theory, this shouldn't be a problem, because this train should rattle backwards and forwards, grabbing a big big handfuls of stuff and going away like that. And then we can start pumping the, uh, the stone through like this, as you see. Um, and it should all be absolutely fine. But it turns out that we've been having some issues with the train there. And that then means that this train can fill up. I'm not going to wait for it to fill up. I'm just going to demonstrate. And we can then send that off to go to Stone Drop, where it'll turn up like this and then unload into the into, into this into this warehouse, which means you can then pass it down here. We can start making the particle stream again. Thank goodness for that. I, um, and that means all the science should then start running. And also, we're going to be making particle stream available for everywhere else that's requiring it. So this may take a little bit of, uh, of refilling. But at least now, once these start to chug through, we're going to be able to start producing particle stream. We're going to we're going to be OK. So we should now find that yeah, as, as it starts to run, you can see uh, a little bit of this is starting to appear in here. We're starting to put a little bit in the pipe in theory. Um, is that pipe gonna, pump going to run? I said to run on 15k. Okay, no. No, we have to fill this tank up a little bit further first because this is a recipe that pulls in particle stream and passes out more particle stream. Therefore, you need to make sure you always have a buffer here, which is why this is set to only run at 50. This pump is set to only run at 15,000. Uh, and why the amount of particle stream available is that possibly actually going down? That shouldn't happen. Maybe I'm just, maybe I just mis misread the numbers. But it'll chug through as the and as as these machines start to manage to managing to complete some builds, we'll then start to get a chunk chunks of particle stream or chunks of particle stream floods of particle stream coming back out, going into the tank here, and then we'll be able to start pumping it through, and, and everything should start working again. And there we go. We're at about basically at 15,000 now. So this pump is starting to flick on and off. We're getting a little bit through here. There's not very much particle stream being passed through at this point, but hopefully that will eventually, uh, that will be enough to make it all the way up to the boson production up here. Yes, up here. And yes, there we go. We're starting to make the boson data again now. So that 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 has fixed the system. Those memory cards can run down here. We're going to be able to start making the uh, the tier four catalogs again now, and uh, everything should everything should then be okay. But we'll see up here that, um, yes, that has been a bit of a problem. We've got quite a shortage of these cards coming through here. Uh, now, it hasn't become a serious problem yet. There's still 800 in each of these warehouses and a full train. So it hasn't become crisis level yet, but it has become a little bit concerning level. So, But yeah, there we go. That, that should now top everything up and everything should start working nicely again. We noticed that the limiting factor on Deep Space Science 1 catalogues was the uh, this this one down here, the, uh, the Naquim squishing data. And so Mike came in, he solved that problem by dropping in another three machines across here, which, to be fair, has solved it, except that we now have a shortage of Naquium ing ingots for it to squish. And so, we, so so it stopped again, and it is still the problem. Um, however, that's that's the problem is solved here. The pro we, we just pushed it back a bit further up the chain. So, we, yeah, as usual, we need more Naquium to be coming in over here. But that is at least going to be at least partly reliant on the reagent, but also heavily reliant on the number of spaceships and the rate we're digging up the, uh, the crushed Naquatite at. So... Yeah, there's, there, there, there are a few problems here that need to be dealt with. <laughs> um, but at least this, this, this particular local one here has been sorted. He's also noted that all of the data cards required for Advanced Science 2 are backing up wonderfully all the way up the belt here. And if, have they got all the way back? Yes, by the, by the time I'm making this video, they have got all the way back. We are now completely full on the Advanced Data Cards. So that's great. We don't need to worry about this system being, being fast enough because it clearly is, at, at least at the moment, it is definitely fast enough to keep up with everything we're trying to do, which is fantastic. Over here, we also seem to have completely filled up on the, um, that's, oh, that's Deep Space Science 3. Where's Deep Space Science 4? Deep Space, and Deep Space Science 4. 3 and 4 are completely filled up. Um, the Naquium processors are completely filled up. So everything, it looks like, yes, everything that's made from Arcospheres is now backed up. We've got enough of all of it. That's really, really good. I'm uh, very, very happy with that. The, the system has, has clearly worked well enough that we're now we're now doing fantastically for everything from Arcospheres. Now it's possible that part of that uh, is because we haven't been able to do very much research because everything else has been suffering. But this does look really good. I think we've got we've got enough built up here. We've got enough backlog that if we, even if we have bursts of, of use from here, I think this all looks great. I think th things are going to be working very very well along here. Yeah, this all just seems to be working well. I'm I'm I'm, I'm impressed and uh, I'm very happy to see it. So the next stage is going to be to look at all of the things that are causing problems. All of the all of the little um, interrupts that we're seeing along here so possibly so definitely the uh, the vitalic reagent possibly the beryllium certainly the holmium and then fixing some of the the issues in in, in cabling and wiring and, and con configuration and so on around here just to make sure that everything is actually working and we can get all of the science packs through and we can start churning and grinding through some of the advanced sciences 
I think things are going pretty well around here. This looks all looks generally promising, except for the Nequium supply. But shh. <laughs> Possibly part of a reason that we're having a Nequium shortage at the moment is that Mark has started making Nequium solar panels. So these are um, these are made from Nequium cubes, which take quite a lot of Nequium, um, and also a couple of other cheaper things like flat solar panels. Although that is going to be putting a drain on the Holmium as well. So uh, I guess it, we're, 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 we're struggling no matter what for uh, for solar panel construction. Uh, and he's made about a thousand of them. So that's going to have chunk churned through quite a bit of Nequium. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's going to be contributing to the problem, should we say. <laughs> and I think part of the reason he's done that is because the Nequium solar panels produce 1.6 megawatts produce, compared to the uh, Holmium solar panels producing 800 kilowatts. So they do produce twice as much electricity, which means if we start using those when we go out to put in the various uh, ludicrously high power things like the dimensional anchor, then we're only going to need half as many solar panels, which makes the whole construction thing a little bit more sensible. However, it does also make it a lot more expensive because of all of the Nequium that we, we're using. And I feel that the, uh, the cost of four superconductive cables and a Nequium cube is more than the cost of an additional second flat solar panel even if you also include all of the scaffolding you have to put down to place it on so yeah I'm not sure that, I'm not sure it's entirely economically sensible but it will mean uh, smaller outposts and, uh, and and shorter build times so I guess it's got that going for it mostly so far though the Naquium solar panels have been used to upgrade the spaceship. So you can see over here, my and Tristan's spaceships, which are the ones that happen to be parked here, have got the uh, the upgraded type of solar panels in them, which means they can produce a bit more power. So if you go on a flight out to Snowdrop, you can easily produce enough power to power your ion engines. Uh, it, it's a little bit of an improvement. Down on the ground, Mark has been continuing um, beating against the uh, the boxes of shame. So he's turned them all into chests of shame instead of warehouses of shame. And whilst that looks far more chaotic, it does mean that in theory there is only one type of item in any given box. And in fact, looking at these, there is only one type of item in any given box. This one only contains copper ingots. This one only contains walls. Uh, this one only contains text plates. This one only contains rocket parts. Uh, and, I, but I, and it also gives you an impression of just how much of certain things we have. You can see all of these ones that contain just rocket parts. So we have huge numbers of those. We've got quite a lot of wall lying around. We've got a load of train batteries that should be dealt with and put somewhere more sensible. But it gives you an impression of what's what, what there is knocking around down here. And then it makes it a lot easier to decide which things are worth tidying up, which things are worth trying to deal with and get back into into the system, into a way where into places where they might be used. So for example, we've got some immersion beams and some holmium solenoids here. These are worth having. They should be sent back up into orbit and sorted into it back into the system up there. Or at least just sorted into the system down here somewhere. So you can look at these things and I go, okay, that's 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 nice. So we've got some holmium holmium solenoids. They should be put in over here. So maybe I'll come down here, I'll put in a blue chest and a couple of loaders, although to be fair, those could be an inserter. Um, and then we'll tell this one to request Holmium Solenoids. And we could do that for all of these things across here. Maybe, I mean, we probably should have, just as a matter of course, to make sure we've got a decent supply of them all. Um, although we need to be careful with the ones that are being fed into red chests because we don't want infinite loops going on. And then we can look at some of the other things down here as well. Like, for example, I noticed there's some genetic data cards in this box over here. So those should be taken up into space and be used for, for science purposes. There's some science packs in there and there and there and there. Again, those should all be taken up into space. Some Naquim plates over here. That should definitely be going go and be, have something more useful done with them. And so with it all arranged like this, it's a lot easier to see what you've got scattered through your chests of shame and decide what's worth packing away and what's, what's worth dealing with and what you might as well just ignore. Like, for example, there's a car in there. We're not going to use that for anything. Some pistols in there. They're, again, completely useless. But it, it means the whole system is a bit more sorted. And there's a load of belts here as well. Those, those will eventually hopefully be taken away and, and turned into red belts to be then passed all the way up the, uh, up the wasp name to be turned into more advanced things. And so that has made things a bit tidier around here. We've, we, we, as I say, you can, we can tell a bit better what we've got. And there's still, still bots dropping stuff off over here. There are apparently, oh yeah, there's been some outposts clearing up as well. That's another thing that I'll talk about soon. He's also removed the artillery train, which used to be parked in, I'm, oh, was it here? I think. No, that's that's course. There used to be an artillery train parked somewhere around here, and I have absolutely no idea where it is because Mark has removed it. Um, but that means because because all the biters on this planet are dead, there is no point in having an artillery train system on this planet anymore. So you know that that might might as well get rid of it. So that's gone, been got rid of, and yeah, we we, we don't need it. So that makes sense. He's also pulled up the old rocket system, so that was everything that was in here. Uh, we had a f we had a feed. Oh no, he hasn't, he hasn't he hasn't actually pulled up the rocket system. Oh, maybe he means yes, this rocket system. He's pulled up all the rockets over here that were being sent off to different planets. Presumably that's what he's pulled uh, pulled up. And so we now don't have a feed of various different belts coming down out of here, going down into the uh, into the rocket systems. We do still have a belt full of um, of rocket parts over here, but th the belt does seem to be empty. To be fair, so at least that's been uh, been been turned off. Where does that is that just a belt to nowhere now? No, that is still a belt of taking rocket parts away because. Oh, 
Oh, because I think we need them for making the uh, making the little probe rockets instead of the main launch rockets. Is that right? Yes, there we go. To make a space probe rocket requires 10 cargo rocket sections and, and other stuff as well. So we've got this system to feed them through here. So maybe, eventually, in the very, very long term, we will manage to get through all of those rocket parts that are in the chests over here. That said, I bet this is feeding from um, from somewhere that's constructing them rather than from uh, rather than them being pulled in. Oh, we have some yellow chests over here that are pulling in stacked rocket sections and then and, and taking them apart and then putting them onto this belt. Where, but we're making also making them down here. No, this this is this is all terrible. We need we need. Uh, this blue this blue chest here that's pulling them in needs to be further down. Oh, actually, which side are you? Are you... No, this is actually all, all seems to be okay. So we've got this machine over here that's dropping them onto the onto, onto the belt on the far side of it. So those will then flow up here. Now, <laughs> what we probably... Yeah, I think what we actually need is another one of these blue chests that's feeding onto the other side of the belt because I... Or, uh, or possibly feeding onto the near side of the belt, but down here. Just to make sure that we don't end up with any um, being fed in on the belt because... So I can put that there and then there, uh, there, like that. Just because we're going to, because up here, this is going to take from both sides of the belt. And we want to make sure that any rocket sections we use for absolutely anything at all definitely just come from the uh, from the logistics system because we have so many of them that we don't want, we, we don't want to be making new ones. It's just, it's just, just wasteful. Mark has moved our meteor defense up into orbit and he's put it by the Norvis spaceport, which at first thought seems like an odd place to have it. However, because there is a supply of meteor defense ammunition being brought up here to be sent off to all of the other planets' defense systems, it makes perfect sense because we can just tap off it there and bring them up here and feed, well, feed all of the guns. And having them up here in orbit, I don't think it makes any real difference, but but the stuff is all up here, so it seems, really, it, it seems fairly harmless. It's just, we seem to be generally putting them in orbit and I suppose we might as well try and be consistent. He's removed an, a, uh, a uranium mine, and, well, that could have been anywhere, who knows. But he has also gone over and continued trying to carpet the world grey. So he's using excess spare stone that we have from core mining, and just spreading it out over the entire universe like this. So, so far he's built up, well, he's put concrete down under this area, because he wanted this to look pretty. Then all of this area is stoned, all, all the way across here, and all the way down here. Um... And this is, this is coming from a system up here that's monitoring how much stone there is on the on the system with this green cable. And that's being passed over to here. So if there is an excessive quantity of stone available in the uh, core, fr core mi mining area, then, any st then stone bricks that are being made over here will be allowed to be passed through here, where they will go into these green warehouses. And any stone bricks in these green warehouses are apparently fair game to then be used to, to carpet the known universe. Uh, I'm not sure wh where he's going to go next. Given he's basically he's done the bus, he's done this area, this town down here, and and all of this area over here. Maybe he's going to maybe this area will be next, and then and then carry on with the, the core mining area. I don't know. He's he's just on a mission to turn the entire world into being paved in in stone. So we'll uh, we'll let him get on with that because we do have a lot of um, of stone coming out of the core mining over here. Uh, you can see it's flowing in steadily over here. It does get taken away, and we are chewing through a lot of it for other things. However, if we ever have an excess of it, then this is a good way to, to dispose of it, to, uh, to get through it all. He also says he sped up the uh, disposal system over here oh, yes, by putting in uh, pro by putting in speed modules in all these machines and a beacon in the middle of it. Uh, this is for getting rid of useless, unwanted stuff. So at the moment, what, what are we asking for at the moment? Okay, iron chests, wooden chests, small pole, uh, wooden poles, gas power stations, and delivery cannon capsules are all being chewed up and disposed of. Uh, we don't really like voiding stuff if we can avoid it, but all of this stuff is is completely useless. So it's, it's not like we're going to do anything. We're not. We're never going to use it for anything else in the future. We've just got huge piles of stuff taking up space in our sh in our chests of shame, and so he's gradually chewing through it up here. And these things, as we've seen, have a seventy five percent now have a twenty five percent chance of destroying whatever's put in them. So this will then give it another go, and on average, it'll take four goes to destroy a thing. That's due to the recipe changes in the recent space exploration update, but that's fine. We've got lots of machines here. They can they can just chew through stuff. Eventually, we'll get rid of it all. Tristan has been continuing on his mission to deal with all of the cleanup stuff, and so he's been removing all of the outposts around the uh, factory that were pulling in air filters and then removing the pollution from those areas. So if we if we have a look at the pollution map now, we might see that some of it's starting to drift outside the um, the confines of the factory, uh, which is seems a little bit gross, but never mind. Uh, we don't care anymore because there's no biters on this planet, and so uh, and, and he's also made it so that the if I can if I can find the damn thing oh yeah, over here the filter the filter system he's removed the warehouses over here that were were containing the uh, the excess spare filters, and he's now just got the um, the clean ones going around in a constant loop like this, and the dirty ones being fed in to be cleaned and then put back onto the loop. 
so we actually, yes, it seems like we have a, a completely solid half belt of, um, of clean filters going out, and then uh, most of a half belt of clean filters coming back in, and some dirty filters. And when we clean out those dirty filters, that seems to be, at the moment at least, enough to fill in the gaps, so we have an actual solid belt of, um, of these filters going through at the moment. Eventually, as they start to get used up by the um, by, by the filtration process, I, I forget whether it's this step or the or the filters themselves that have a chance of destroying them. No, it's not this step. It's the filters the filters themselves that have a chance of of, of occasionally destroying one of the, uh, the one of the filters that get put, gets put into them. Eventually, we'll start to use all of these up and. Eventually, on a very, very, very long time, probably long after we've finished, finished the game, uh, we will eventually run out of these filters and the whole system will uh, fall asleep and all of our pollution will, will eke out to cover the entire planet and um, won't that be a shame. <laughs> but for now, we do still have some of them running around and we're just letting them run around the belt because, well, because why not really? I don't think we'd gain very much UPS from getting rid of them. Another thing he cleaned up was a massive train jam, and I'll show you on the um, in the stream in a second. But that was caused by a single missing um, signal down here. I think it was probably this one, or no, no, this this one up here. It was one of the, I think it was this one up here, and that meant that a train came in and got to here, but then another train came to here and couldn't go any further. It, it all jammed up, and that meant we had a jam going out. Well, you, you can see how bad the train jam was. It was going out all all out out, out of most most of the central area and uh, causing all kinds of chaos. But once we dropped in that one missing signal, it did clean itself up and clear out relatively quickly. And I was impressed with how quickly it all sort of went back, got back to normal, and things started to behave themselves. And so, as ever, that brings us on to the researchers. We managed to complete Energy Weapon Damage 13 this stream after having been working on it for I don't know how long. Um, this, is, this is the one that we've been starting and stopping based on how much uh, Energy Science 4 we had available. And so it's been uh, it's been sporadic, uh, but now we've finally managed to finish it. And that means we could now, in theory, start working on Energy Weapon Damage 14, which requires a mere 51,000 of each of those uh, science packs, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, this is why I'm saying we may at some point decide that to call these you know, these are effectively infinite researchers. We'll, 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 we'll see how we get on. But first, we'll make sure we've ch chugged through all of the uh, all the non-infinite ones first. We completed long-range star mapping 13 and 14 and have been doing some work on number 15. And this is why we managed to run out of astroscience. Well, that and the fact that the, uh, the belts were clogged with all the wrong things. Uh, and so this is finding us more, um, this is finding us patterns of stars in the distant galaxies, which, which we believe is going to be useful for the archaeological victory. Uh, so we're, this is where we're getting all of those, um, all the symbols from that we're comparing to the ones that we're finding in the uh, in the pyramids. We have unlocked the matter cube, which is a way of transporting matter around. As you can see over here, you can turn 2000 matter into a cube by squashing it up and then slicing the corners off, I suppose. And then over here, you can turn one cube into a thousand matter. So it's a kind of wasteful way to transport it around, but we might decide that it's, it's a good way to do it. The other thing is it does use a charged matter stabilizer, or at least it uses 1% of a charged matter stabilizer. We might decide it's not worth it. I think it's gonna largely depend on what you can do with the thing. So you can take a matter cube, you can turn it back into matter as we saw, or you can destroy it. So it is essentially, it is just a way of transporting matter around. That's quite dull. I think we're not going to be using those because why would we? Any matter we want to transport, we can just transport it in its fluid form. Granted, it's not going to be quite as dense. I suppose maybe if we needed absolutely phenomenal amounts of matter somewhere, then maybe it would be worth transporting like this. Yes, having said that, I can see how this might be useful. We could put a load of matter cubes into a spaceship and then send it out to somewhere that's using a singularity reactor because you can use matter and an empty singularity fuel cell to refill that uh, that fuel cell and then put it back into the into the reactor. So potentially this might be a worthwhile way of transporting it around if we don't want to have spaceships with massive tanks of matter in them. Uh, given the lossiness of it and given that you lose 50% of your matter, I'm tempted to say we should just deal with it and transport it around as a, as a fluid. That said, that said, matter is incredibly cheap. We're making it in huge quantities over here from waste products. So turning it into cubes, even if, even if you lose half of it from that, might be a better way to do it. I don't know. We'll have to think about that one. Um, it's wasteful, but it might make the logistics sufficiently easier that it's, that it's, that it's worth it. Because one of these tanks is the same size as a warehouse. It, it takes 200,000. So that's equivalent to 200 matter cubes. And so even if they only stack to one, you'd be able to fit two and a half times as many, two and a half times as much matter into the same space in a warehouse in a spaceship as you would as you would if you use one of these storage tanks. Hmm. That, we're going to have to have a think about that one because I can see the advantages both ways there. It might depend on how much we need out there and whether a spaceship with, a, uh, with full fluid tanks of matter is enough to keep one of those things supplied and happy. 
Speaking of the Singularity Reactor, we have made a Singularity Reactor. <laughs> and so that has allowed us to now start making yeah, Singularity fuel cells and also the reactor as well, of course. I talked about this quite a bit in the first part of this update video, because these are a potential way to power things like the, the Stargate, because they do kick out a decent amount of power. So we may we may look into using these and therefore all of the all the other stuff with the matter that I've been talking about. Uh, we, sh we shall have to see. It does seem to be the only realistic way of powering the Stargate, but, well, as I say, we, we shall have to see. Finally, we kicked off um, Mining Productivity 12 because we wanted something that didn't use energy science. In this case, it's using the biological science, which we've now run out of as well, but, you know, well, c'est la vie. <laughs> so we kicked that one off. We've done a bit of the research there, um, and that's about it. And so that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. As you've probably noticed, it's been rather quiet on the channel recently because I've been away on holiday. However, I am now back, and that means that the next stream will be tomorrow. We're returning to the normal schedule, so there'll be a Factorio K2SE stream tomorrow on, on Monday, followed by a satisfaction factory stream on Wednesday and then the normal catch-up videos at the weekend as and when they're ready. We'll also be doing another supporter stream at some point in the future but that one's not been fully planned yet so keep an eye out for that. Thanks again and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.